Okay, in our previous lecture, we talked about uh, interpolation functions, and in a couple of the lectures before that, we talked about uh, taking the equations of motion uh, in the general 3D case, um, converting them to a weak form, and then applying the Galerkin method uh, to develop approximate the solutions uh, for the displacement field. Um, so let me give you, I'll write down the weak form that we had um, developed uh, uh, using uh, the Galerkin method. Okay, so recall the following. Okay, the weak form of the equations of motion uh, using the Galerkin method, okay, they looked like uh, as follows. We had the integral over the volume of rho times this vector of interpolation functions that we'll call n, uh, ui double dot dv, right, plus integral over the volume uh, interpolation function n uh, partial with respect to x sub j times c i j k l uh, u k comma l dv uh, is equal to the integral over the volume uh, of our interpolation function vector n times our body force vector b i dv plus integral over the surface where we've applied tractions of our interpolation vector n times t sub i ds. Let's call that equation one. Okay? We did this uh, in, in part because I wanted to show very clearly how everything on the left hand side depended on the displacement u. Okay? So let's just say that equation one uh, shows the explicit dependence on displacement. Um, displacement uh, u sub i, okay? Um, I also want you to recall that this second term, this integral over the volume times the partial of n with respect to xj of cijkl times uk comma l, that term, uh, we, we, we found that by taking sigma ij and converting it into uh, this quantity here, right? So I'll just remind you of that. Recall also that the second term uh, on the left-hand side uh, was found from the following, right? And we said in we said in a previous lecture that the integral over the volume of n with res uh, partial with respect to x j of sigma i j dv is equal to integral over the volume of n partial xj uh, times c i j k l u k comma l dv and, and go back to the previous lectures if you forgot how we did that okay as we go forward i'm going to actually revert back to this formulation and i'm going to use this term instead of this term um, because it's uh, just more convenient in in the development uh, as we proceed here Okay, so I'll just say that uh, development is more convenient from here. Okay, and you're probably going to be happy about that because you didn't really want to deal with a, a fourth order tensor with 81 components. So uh, we're going to go back to that. Um, but what I am going to do uh, is I'm going to come back here and I'll just say that um, uh, we'll use this uh, we'll use this uh, uh, term in equation two. So using the original term uh, in equation two, okay? Um, and I'm gonna explicitly write out all the i's. So instead of writing it as u sub i, I'm gonna write it as u1, u2, and u3. Um, again, I, I, it's partly because I think it's gonna be easier to see if you're just not really comfortable using it. Um, it's also gonna be a little bit easier for us to expand and kind of see what we're doing, okay? So I'm going to use the original term in equation two, this this term with the sigma ij, okay, uh, and um, I'm going to break equation one into three equations, okay. So the first one uh, will be when i equals one, that will give us one equation. So let's see, that'll be integral over the volume of rho n. Nothing changes there, except now instead of u i, we'll have u one double dot dv, right? plus integral over the volume n partial with respect to xj 
Uh, and then we would have sigma ij, but since i is going to be equal 1, we have sigma 1j there. Remember, though, that j's are repeated, so that means that there's a sum, and we'll expand that out in a little bit. Okay? dv uh, is equal to uh, the integral over the volume. These are all fairly straightforward. Uh, times b1, the body force in the one direction. Uh, dv plus integral over the surface uh, inter interpolation function times now t1 ds okay and we do the same for i equals 2 uh, here we go integral over the volume of rho n u2 double dot dv plus integral over the volume n partial with respect to xj Okay, one thing I'm doing, I'm saying this over and over again, this is partial with respect to xj. If you remember the previous lecture when we talked about interpolation functions, I gave them to you in uh, natural coordinates, uh, which meant that uh, they were in c, eta, and zeta, not x, y, and z. So uh, eventually we're going to have to come back and explain why, how to reconcile that, okay? Uh, and we will, uh, not in this lecture, but in future lectures. So that's sigma 2j dv equals integral over the volume of n b2 dv uh, plus the integral over the surface of n t2 ds okay and now the same thing for i equals three okay integral over the volume rho n uh, u3 double dot dv plus the integral over the volume of n partial with respect to xj. Now sigma 3j dv is equal to integral over the volume of n b3 dv plus integral over the surface of n t3 ds. Okay, and we're going to collectively uh, call these equation 3. Okay, now what do we do? Well, let's go ahead and consider uh, the first terms on the, the left-hand side of these equations. So consider the first terms on the left-hand side of the equations uh, given by 3. Okay, uh, and we're going to introduce the approximation uh, for you. Okay. Uh, more specifically for u i double dot, and I'll put a star to indicate that it's an approximation. And what we would write is that u i double dot star, that approximate solution, which will be a function of x and t, right? It's a displacement field that could depend on time, is going to be equal to our interpolation functions, which are functions of x transpose now times our nodal accelerations ui double dot right where this is a vector of nodal accelerations and i should mention that these nodal accelerations uh, are time dependent okay right they're important to note they're not spatially dependent they're just they're the, the nodal displacements at those nodes as a function of time okay uh, we'll call that equation four okay so that's that's step one <clears throat> The next thing I want to note is I want to look at the right-hand side uh, of equations 3, okay? Uh, let's say consider also uh, that the right-hand side of 3, what is that? Well, those are the, the net forces on the nodes, okay? So that the right-hand side of equation 3 uh, represents net forces on the nodes, Okay, so because of that, we can say that, for example, F sub I, where this is directions 1, 2, and 3, that's going to be equal to, that's going to be equal to the integral uh, of the volume, over the volume rather, of N times BI dV plus integral over the surface of N ti ds we'll call that equation five 
Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and substitute 4 and 5 into back into equation 3. Or I'll just say using 4 and 5 uh, in equation 3, we get the following. Uh, that first term is now integral over the volume of rho times n. And then where I saw a u1 double dot, now I introduce my approximation u1 double dot star, the approximate solution, and that's going to look like n transpose, okay, times uh, the, uh, the nodal accelerations. So u1, which are functions of t, they're of the element, Okay, dv, right? So it's tempting to say that, which is fine, but I want to point out something here. This term, the nodal accelerations, and I should put double dots on them to note that they're accelerations, th those aren't dependent on x, so they can come outside the integral. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm going to erase this. I'm going to write the integral as it sits just like this, and I'm going to bring that vector now outside and call that u1 double dot. So these are my nodal accelerations, okay? Something like that. Uh, then I have just what I had before, plus the integral over the volume of n partial with respect to xj, uh, sigma 1j dv uh, is equal to now, uh, I'm going to use equation 5 and just write this as the some of the, the net nodal force in the one direction, okay? Okay, and I can do that for the other cases as well. So I have for i equals 2, rho n, n transpose dv. Hopefully you're starting to see some patterns that are emerging. Times my nodal accelerations, uh, ue2 double dot, right? Plus integral over the volume, n partial with respect to xj, now sigma 2j dv is equal to nodal forces in the 2 direction, and then finally integral over the volume of rho n, n transpose dv times my nodal accelerations uh, u3 double dot of my element plus integral over the volume n partial with respect to xj now sigma 3j dv uh, is equal to forces in the 3 direction okay and we'll collectively call these uh, equations 6 Okay, I'm going to make an observation now. So observe, right, that, that the quantity n times n transpose uh, yields an m by m matrix, right? Right, where m is the number of nodes in the element. Okay, so this integral actually represents an m by n matrix okay so i'm going to go ahead and define okay so we define the quantity i'll call it m uh, sub s i call it sub s because it's a it's a sub matrix of the total mass matrix that we'll talk about in a little bit uh, m sub s is going to equal integral over the volume of rho times n times n transpose dv, okay, uh, we'll call that equation 7. So now I'm going to go ahead and substitute equation 7 into equation 6. So substituting 7 uh, into 6, okay, and I'm going to expand the summation in the second integral term, okay. Then I'm going to end up with the following. So this that integral term now becomes the matrix M sub S, right, times the acceleration vector 
u1 double dot of the element, right? Uh, plus, and now I'm going to expand this. This becomes the integral over the volume. I'm going to expand where j equals 1, 2, and 3. So this is n, partial of n with respect to x1. Sorry, sigma 1, 1, rather. Okay, so sigma 1, 1, okay, plus n partial with respect to x2 times sigma 1, 2 plus n uh, with respect to partial with respect to x3 times sigma 1, 3. Okay, that whole quantity dv is equal to f sub 1. And then we do this again. m sub s then times the acceleration vector u2 double dot plus integral over the volume times the quantity n partial n with respect to x1 right but now it's going to be times sigma 2 1 technically uh, uh, but we're going to use the symmetry of the the stress tensor and write this as sigma 1 2 right plus n partial with respect to x2 times sigma 2 2 right plus n partial with respect to x3 times sigma 2 3 dv is equal to f2 right and the last equation that gets written down is m sub s now times the acceleration the nodal accelerations uh, in the three direction plus integral for, over the volume of n partial with respect to x1 times, this is again sigma 3, 1, we're going to use a symmetry of the stress tensor to write sigma 1, 3, plus, and do the same on this side. Sorry, my braces are getting bad as I <laughs> my hand gets tired. Uh, uh, n partial with respect to x2 of uh, sigma 2, 3 uh, plus n partial with respect to x3 times sigma 3, 3 integral dv is equal to f3. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll collectively call those uh, equations 8. Okay. So we're getting pretty close. Uh, I think on the, the terms that look like m sub s times the acceleration vectors, you can start see start seeing how the matrix equations are going to emerge. Um, and also the need that we're going to have to evaluate integrals um, uh, and, and be able to explain a little bit of how we can take, a, we, we need an interpolation function in terms of x, but we're given interpolation functions in terms of C, eta, and zeta, and how do we do that mapping uh, uh, to, to, to move forward. So we'll talk about that in future lectures, um, but first in, the, in part two of what follows this lecture, uh, we'll finish off and finally develop the, the final form of the matrix equations.